Let's talk about the long weekend coming up, some things that we might be able to do. Let's talk about uh, VA foreclosures. Let's talk about some housing statistics that I'll be paying attention to. But folks, let's remind you that our event in Vegas is almost sold out. We are down to 19 tickets left. Again, President's Day weekend, 15 millionaires, 20 plus hours of content, all driven by you, the audience members. If you haven't gotten your ticket, buy it today. It could sell out today. The tickets are going faster and faster and faster. 199 Las Vegas, February 17th, 18th. Bring your significant other, make, it, make a weekend of it. I hope to see you there. Uh, so let's talk about foreclosures. I don't know if you've seen the news, uh, but apparently the VA, Veterans Affairs or Veterans Administration, has had some challenges modifying VA loans. Now folks, you have probably heard about FHA in conventional loans, they went on forbearance, and a lot of them got 40-year mortgages, they stuck seconds on, all of that stuff. Apparently, the VA was unable to modify loans. So veterans had to come up with the cash or face foreclosure. There were many, many, many veterans on the path to foreclosure. Thankfully, because of social media and the rise in folks talking about it, the VA has come out with a note that says no foreclosures will proceed until May 31st, 2024. I believe why they are doing this is they are going to modify the loans so that they can modify for the veterans. It is the right thing to do. So again, no foreclosures are coming from uh, VA loans. You know, they'll kick the can down to May 31st and hopefully adopt rules that allow them to modify loans. So I think, I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, Mark Zandi, uh, economist talking about why the economy is not as interest rate sensitive. Now folks, if you're a fan of the channel, we've been talking about this for six months. But just in case you've forgotten, we will remind you of two important factors. Why a 500 basis point raise in interest rates is not decimating our economy. There are two things. One, our debt is fixed. 91% of our debts are fixed, which means only 9% of our debts are variable. And if you are in an environment where your debt is variable and it goes up 500% or 500 basis points, you are in trouble. But if your loan is fixed, it doesn't matter. So again, 9% of our debt is variable. Remember something we shared with you months ago, the effective mortgage rate across all mortgages is 3.6%, <coughs> excuse me, 3.6%, that does not include all of the free and clear properties. So pretty wild to think about. Second, um, our debt burden. Our debt burden currently sits at about 18%. <coughs> when you, what is a debt burden? That is basically how much payments you have to your income. Today, again, we are sitting at 18%, but what does 18% mean? We had a record high of 35% in 2008. Yes, I know all the doomers want you to believe that today is 2008. They want you to believe that the Great Recession is coming. They want you to believe that the Depression is coming and all of those things. The debt picture does not support that. So again, our debt is largely fixed. Our ability to pay because our debt is fixed is half, roughly the peak period. So let's talk about that. Uh, the other thing that I found finally is over the last 18 months, the market, right, the smart money, if you will, has had six different times where they bet the Fed would be dovish and they weren't. The reason I bring that up is again, because why? The market is currently pricing in four rate cuts 
in the next 12 months. I think that is uh, rather unlikely. And again, why do I believe that? I believe the market, right, the smart money, believes that they can push Powell to doing an emergency rate cut. I believe the market thinks if it gets bad enough, the stocks collapse, something that, the, that Jerome Powell and his minions will slash 100 basis points just like that. And of course, black swan, it could really happen. But I stand by something that I brought up well over a year ago, that Jerome Powell is trying to break that Fed pivot. Jerome Powell is willing to, in my opinion, have unemployment go higher. I believe Jerome Powell is willing to have a recession. I believe Jerome Powell is willing to have a 30% stock drop, right? Let the uh, stock indexes fall 30% and he won't cut. I believe he is higher for longer. So we, we shall see on that. Now, will he be able to go all next year? I don't know. But I do believe he is going to hold rates higher longer than the market thinks. And again, the market's been wrong six times already. As we get into the end of the year and rates are falling, I have to ask you, do you think we get below 7% 30-year mortgage rates by the end of December? What is it, five weeks away? I hope not, honestly. I hope not. I hope rates stay in the sevens. I, we, 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 we can't keep doing this. It's the winter, let it, let it slow down, let inventory build, let days on market rise. We kind of need the market to slow down. But if rates go sub seven folks, inventory is gonna shrink and demand will spike. So let me talk about some things that I am looking at when I think about real estate and all of that. One is days on market. As you know, I'm using days on market to write disrespectful offers. I'm looking at mark 30 days or more, nothing less. If it's under 30 days, I don't currently look at it. You should know your buy box, your market, those things, but that is what I'm doing. Next, we gotta watch active inventory. Do we still have a bifurcated market where luxury homes are stacking up, but affordable homes are shrinking? I think so, I think in most markets. The next two things I think are going to be long-term trends that you and I need to pay attention to. One is the average tenure in a home. Historically speaking, based on mortgages, the average was eight years. I believe in the next decade, it will move to 11, 12, perhaps even as high as 13 or 14. We are going to stay in our homes longer. We have interest rate lock-in, we can't move on, all of those things. The Fed broke the housing market, which we have talked about a lot. And then the other one that's not really highlighted, it's called a turnover rate. How fast does a home turn over? It's about 1.8% historically. I think that is going to drop dramatically. It's probably gonna go down to about 1.2. Now that may not seem like a lot, but that's 30%. I think we are going to drop 30% on the turnover rate. Uh, and then lastly, Tuesday, tomorrow, we get ex existing home sales. Just to kind of level set, last month 3.96. Expectations are 3.93. I'm folks going below 3.9. I think 3.9 is where we're going. And you can actually see we are just taking off from the lovely city of Melk. Yes, folks, Melk in Austria. If you ever get a chance to go to Austria, get a chance to cruise down the Danube and see Melk. It is a gorgeous, cute little town and uh, the people are very warm and friendly a little bit of a microclimate it's pretty awesome so milk Austria as we pull away going down the Danube so again I, I'm gonna call sub 39 sub 39 for tomorrow then lastly folks I want to give you five things five things to do this long weekend some of them you may have been doing already so pick the ones that you like one I do believe that discretionary income is the path to wealth. If you want to get rich, you need discretionary income. So do you know your discretionary income? Have you calculated it? Do you know what it is each month? If not, 
time to break out the pencil and calculator? Calculate your discretionary income. Number two, if you are interested in real estate, it is time to have a buy box. Time to set it up. If you don't know what a buy box is, congratulations. I got a $47 two hour buy box deep dive. Go watch it, it is amazing. Three, if you are doing all of that already, I would like to challenge you for with one thing. How many ways can you raise the yield 2% on any property that is on your buy box? So if you do the math and it comes out at negative 3%, how many ways can you raise that 2%? Here's a hint, lower price is just one. There are many, many other ways to raise the yield. Number four, write down, like literally write down five things you are thankful for. Take a minute, get quiet, five things you are thankful for and share them with someone. Share them with your loved one, share them with your family. This is the time. What are we thankful for? And then number five, do me a favor. Send a text message or call someone, send them an email, whatever you prefer. Send three friends that you haven't talked to in a while a text message saying hello, hope you're doing well, however you want to do it. But go ahead and send a note to three friends. Alrighty folks, I hope you have an amazing day. It is, uh, it is amazing to have the uh, ability to go on these kinds of adventures and trips. Um, it took 20 years. Getting wealthy is not a, a one day, a one month, a one year thing. I know we are in a very fortunate position, thankful for that. But I do believe all of you watching, you can have this. Discretionary income, increase it, buy assets that cash flow, 10 years, all the things that we talk about here. Alrighty folks, take care of yourself. I'll uh, turn the camera around. We are pulling away on the Danube. It is a gorgeous little town. Night is setting. I think you can see the moon there. Yeah, you can see the moon coming in. Alrighty folks, I hope you enjoy that. Take care, bye.